Welcome back, folks, as we continue our coverage here today of LastPlayerStanding.com's SC2 Open number three. We're going to be diving into game number two between Crazy Moving and Gosu DDE here today on GSL Dual Sight. Now, game number one left us with kind of a little bit of a pickle for DDE. You know, his transition into Banshee Tech did not work so well. It left him quite vulnerable, and that small window of opportunity for, DD for uh, Crazy Moving to come in and attack with that Roach Lane counter, it was very effective, and I have to say, DDE is definitely going to be looking to kind of switch it up a little bit here, try to approach it with a different tactic. I think the Hellion opener had the potential to be very strong, but crazy moving, I mean, he's a pretty darn good player, man. He was able to handle all of those Hellions without too much difficulty at all, and DDE was not able to get in there and do any economic damage. I think he killed one or two Zerklings, that's about it. And uh, the Hellions were kind of staggered, I will say that much. So first two came in, then the other two. But uh, that definitely contributed, I think, to the overall success that Crazy Moving saw. But here we are in game number two now, and things could be drastically different. I'm really wondering if Crazy Moving is going to be opening up with like a 14-14 and then going for the expansion, or if he's just going to go ahead and opt straight for the early hatch. It's all going to kind of come down to... Uh, to the risk versus reward, what he thinks that he's going to be able to get away with. The thing about this map is that the expansion is way more vulnerable than uh, than on the other map that we saw. So Antigua Shipyards had to think about that for a second. So if he's going to be doing that, he has to be prepared to get a quick circlings out and be ready to defend possibly against bunker pressure. Now we do have two barracks going down here, no gas. So DDE is definitely looking to get back in this with some quick harass at the natural. He does already have the one SCV heading over right now. Keep in mind that Crazy Moving does have a Overlord over here at the ramp, so he's going to be able to spot, I'm sorry, not the ramp, but the entrance, he's going to be able to spot the SCV coming in here, so he's going to kind of know to watch out for that bunker-style pressure that could be actually be happening here at the ramp. Oh no, he's placing it way far out. Did the Overlord spot it? I, I kind of wonder if he did. I'm. Uh, it was just on the edge there, but we do have that drone heading out now. Yep, sure enough, here we go, folks. This will be forced to cancel as there are. There is one marine heading over. A couple more as well, but it's definitely going to be a while before they can actually come over there and get this bunker down. The SCV has been kiting around. You see, it's still trying to scout, see if he can figure out what's going on. He spots that spawning pool. He might decide just to go ahead and cancel that and not commit the marines up here. He does have one coming over. He may be able to pop off a drone or two, but he's still got to be pretty careful because that spawning pool is complete and all of these drones coming down now, it's going to make it a very awkward situation for DDE. Sure enough, he will be leaving this behind. He does need to go ahead and cancel that, though. Two Marines coming back. He's going to try to hold it after all. There's the cancellation as three Marines total. The, bear, the bunker actually is remade again, way far away from his opponent. This will not be able to uh, provide direct firing on the hatchery itself, but there is a queen on the way that should be able to absorb a lot of the damage. Second bunker going down, making for a good position for the Marines. That's a lot of Zerglings, though, man. You're going to see those eventually just mop up those Marines. That's a lot of money lost right there. All those Marines plus uh, 75 resources lost on three bunker cancellations total. So... As far as where DDE stands right now, we look at his base, going ahead, throwing down a command center. Very smart move. Good transition. He's already got the structure or the infrastructure to be able to uh, continue putting pressure and create some defense for his base. But at the same time, he does need to go ahead and get his economy caught up with his opponent. Now, Zerg over here is going to be able to uh, at least chase these Marines back for a little bit. I'm not sure how much damage he's actually going to be able to do unless he gets those reinforcements in here rather quickly. Yep, DDE, sure enough, coming out with two more Marines able to drive away the Zerglings, pushing the Zerg back on his half of the map. Now, over here, we have continued droning up at the natural expansion, really kind of just sticking with the economic style of play here now. And I think this is a very smart move because he doesn't really have any options at this point, this exact moment, to bust into the Terran base and punish him um, in any way having that delayed expansion. So with this spine crawler going down, this is just, again, in anticipation of potential Hellions, although I don't, let me see, has he actually spotted that? Okay, yeah, he spotted that up there. He is starting to harass, but we see Marines coming over here looking to get these Zerglings. He's going to want to fight him off the creep there. Also has to watch out for that spine crawler as it is just about complete. We have more reinforcements on the way, but you see Terran is actually choosing to fall back, realizing that the potential for damage that he could do was not that high. Unless he got way up here, 
But in that case, he would be committing these Marines to an attack that he would likely end up losing and not gaining a net result. So we'll just see what happens here. With more barracks going down, we also do have a factory double gas as well. So I would expect to see a transition into siege tanks here. Maybe a Hellion or two if he wants to try to punish. But again, you got to remember, the Zerg is ahead of his opponent right now. So he's going to be able to get out some defenses rather quickly. DDE realizes this. He knows he needs to get his uh, economy going down the natural. And so after flooding his mineral line with SCVs from the natural or from his second command center for another second or two, he's going to need to float that down there. And he, he's already throwing down some defenses as a result. Continuing on with the barracks, we do have a tech lab on the way. And everything is looking fine for the Terran player. Do want to point out that we have a Baneling Nest that just started a second ago. 22 Zerglings on the way. So a big time commitment to some type of a bust here at the natural. He's really anticipating this uh, this move down here. He spotted the bunker. He knows what's going on, and sure enough, he's going to be looking to delay this as long as possible by placing the Zerglings in the landing path for the command center. Marines able to get rid of those Zerglings, drive them back, and this is kind of the safe point here for Crazy Move. And keep in mind, he also has the Metabolic Boost upgrade, just about complete. 16 additional Zerglings on the way. So to top it off here with all those building, we can just kind of take a look. 47 Zerglings littered across the map. 15 Marines, 32 to 29 for the workers right now. And one Siege Tank on the way with a bunch of Banelings now morphing in. So as far as the Terran player is concerned, he is going to have a very difficult time holding this off. He does not have Stem. He does not have Combat Shields. If he had both, be great obviously a little bit too early for this build to be able to have that effectively but you know we're still going to be looking to see him try to get the one or both here in the near future but without either of those it's going to be very difficult you see the Zerglings actually coming in getting a good surround bunker has gone down will the Banelings be able to bust up in here take out this depot and allow the Zerglings safe passage into the base they are able to come in here and now the Marines and SCVs will try to defend this siege tank but to no avail you're going to see these Zerglings do so much damage and the Baneling explodes once again leaving crazy moving free reign of the base here on GSL dual site where we're seeing all of this SCVs now get taken out more Banelings on the way, taking out a bunch of SCVs, as well as the last Siege Tank. 22 additional Zerglings on the way. Crazy Moving is definitely in a superior position. Looking at the workers killed, 1 to 29. We see he has 9, 10 workers total, compared to 32. This is really not a recoverable situation. Banelings morphing on the ramp. There's the GG from DDE, concluding this series bringing it to a swift 2-0 victory for Crazy Moving. So that's going to be it for this particular uh, get match set, folks. Thank you for watching. Again, if you want to find out more about this tournament, head over to lastplayerstanding.com. You can find out all kinds of information about the players, etc. Again, I am Anaris, my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Starcraft, and we'll see you in the next video.